Hello, my name is Mason Kieser. I'm with the uh, Samuel Proctor Oral History Program um, with my companion. Vasilios Kuzmakos. Mm -hmm. uh, this interview is a part of the Tidewater uh, Main Street Project, and I'd like to know who, with whom do I have the pleasure of speaking today? Annie Mae Miller. Annie Mae Miller. All right, so Annie Mae, I'm going to start with um, uh, when and where were you born? I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19, four, December the 21st, um, 25th, 1943. Born on Christmas. On Christmas. Uh -huh. Born on Christmas, and um, uh, what were your parents' names? And my mother's name, maid name was Ethel May Waller. And your father? Coleman Miller. Miller. Uh, did they, and they lived in Philadelphia for, were they No, from they lived in Virginia, Middlesex County, Virginia, and they relocate to uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, PA. Do you remember what they moved up to Philadelphia to do, what they did up there? Uh, I'm not familiar. They got married, and my older brother was born in 42, so I would think it would be somewhere around, around mm -hmm. 40, 41, 40, 40, 41. And I reckon y'all moved back down from Philadelphia? Uh, my father went into the service, and my mother moved back to Virginia. I think I was about four years old, mm -hmm. four or five years old. To, she moved back in her parents' house, and my father was in the service in the war. And I think he, he must have returned when I was maybe about five, maybe. Do you remember what branch he was in? The Army. The Army, okay. okay. Uh, and so when did you, uh, when did you attend St. Clair Walker High School? 1958. 58? Yes. Mm -hmm. All four years? Or was it, a, was it um, fresh, like a ninth grade? From eighth grade, grade to eighth twelfth. Grade. Okay, so you, before that, um, what, what I was at Union Shallow Elementary School mm -hmm. in Jamaica, Virginia. Jamaica, Virginia. Mm -hmm. what, was that one through seven, grades one through seven? Right. Mm -hmm. What was that like, your elementary school experience? <laughs> oh, it was pretty rough because I had to walk to school. Oh, yeah? We lived not far from school, so I had to walk. And only day we got rides when it would rain or the weather, or snow or something like that. But it was like maybe six or seven kids. We walked through a little path through the woods. Uh -huh. Was it how long, how far was the walk? Maybe 15, 20 minutes. 15, okay. A little while. But the worst part, during that time, it was a cemetery we had to pass. <laughs> and when I had to walk alone, I ran past the cemetery because <laughs> somehow I, I was frightened of the people told you stories that frightened you about the cemetery. Mm -hmm. the, um, you got rides, would it be a family member or just like yeah, a Yeah, it would be. It was my uncle. He had a car at the time, and my parents did not have a car at mm -hmm. this time. That I think. Uh, Maybe the whole time I went to elementary school, we did not have a car. Hmm. We had a horse and wagon. Really? Okay. Y'all, you kept the horse at your house? Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. Did you have to take care of the horse? No, I was afraid of him. You were afraid it was a, it was a big horse then? <laughs> yeah, he was a big, young. He ran, he used to run us up on the porch. And we was really afraid of him until <laughs> after we had him for about five or six years, and it looked like he got a little calm. He got a little calm, yeah. Yeah. And the wa how big was the wagon? The it was family? enough to, like, see, it was three, four, five, six, enough to ride six people on oh, it because wow. on Sundays, my grandmother was quite a ways away and we used to go up to her house to have Sunday dinners. Uh huh. What did she cook for you? On oh, days? it was good macaroni and cheese, uh -huh. fried chicken, string beans, candy yams. Uh, it was always a big dinner and good because mm -hmm. she loved to cook. Did you have any dessert on those days? Anything yeah, sweet special? potato pie and oh, apple pie. That's good. And so y'all, you had the horse and the wagon. What did your, uh, uh, what your parents do when you when they y'all came back to Middlesex? It was Middlesex you came back to. Are you in Jamaica? She, my mother stayed home and took care of the family. My uh -huh. father went out. He worked with his brother. They used to cut what they call it. 
pump wood, carved wood. Mm -hmm. And he had a truck, so my father worked with his brother mm -hmm. until, and he farmed a little bit. You remember what he grew in the farm? Uh, corn, string beans, sweet potatoes, and it was pretty, pretty uh, much just to feed the family. And mm -hmm. then he raised, he did raise pigs mm -hmm. and he sold them to, to help with the finance. Mm -hmm. So let's go on back to the, uh, you've gone through the elementary school. How many kids did you go to school with? Like in an average like classroom, I guess. It was small. I would say no more than 15. More than 15? Mm -hmm. Y'all got along well or was it? Yeah, a, we got know? along. Always had one or two that caused fights so uh -huh. to get the kids, but we got along pretty well. Do you remember any It was your... mostly family, really. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of your uh, teachers well from that time? Yes, Daisy J. Foster and Reverend T.W. Mars mm -hmm. and Carrie Peterson. She was the principal. Mm -hmm. See, so we had one, two, three teachers that I can remember going through the elementary school. Did you have a favorite class, favorite subject? When you yes, that time? Uh, yes, I like uh, reading and I like math. Okay, I usually don't see. Usually, people like reading and they don't like math, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. But you kind of got both bases covered. That's yeah. good. Uh, so, what were, when you go, you get out of that. What were your uh, um, earliest memories of St. Clair High School, St. Clair Walker High School? The earliest memory was quite sad. My sister was very, very smart and they skipped her, so we was in the same class. Mm -hmm. So we started in, let's say she died in 58. We started 58. March the 3rd, 59, she died suddenly. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother thought she had the flu, but it seems like when they did an autopsy, it was a kidney, hemorrhaging from the kidney. And see, if they had carried her to the doctor four hours, they said if she had arrived for medical help in four hours, she, they might could have saved her. And she was like a little genius, very, very smart. She, and like I said, we was very close, even though I was the oldest, she did everything like she was the oldest. Because I yeah. stood back and let her take over because she was just so smart. Do you have other siblings? What's that? Do you have other siblings? You said oh, you it was oldest. six. It was three girls and three boys, and I was the second oldest. And my brother died at an early age. He mm -hmm. was only 40, 46 or 7, 47, I think it was. He had a prostate cancer. He mm -hmm. was in the military, and he, he was healthy up until about six, seven months before he died from prostate cancer. And St. Clair, uh, Do you remember the atmosphere of that school? Was it kind of, were people very, you know, polite, kind of, they, you know, trying to dress yeah, nice? Yeah, it seemed like everybody got along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was exciting. It was nice. I enjoyed the first years, the first couple of years at high school. I guess your younger siblings, like your brothers, they also went to St. Clair? Yes. Did you set a, did you kind of, you were the, you're like the first one there. Did you kind of set a good example for them? Like all the teachers like you and so they like them too, or? Yeah, we was pretty well like as a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you, how was the relationship between, you know, your family, and your, like your parents and then the, the teachers at St. Clair? It, to tell you the truth, it really was no relationship because my mother didn't drive uh -huh. and we didn't, she didn't have a way to get to school to meet the teachers. So uh, they, it was not really a relationship. Did you all talk about school at home? All the time. Oh yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. Elsa, can you go on more about that, expand on that a bit more? Yes, we talked about it and discussed it and talked about the teachers that we like. And, and school was fun until I lost my sister suddenly. Mm -hmm. And I think I was out of school like three months. I started suffering with anxiety attacks. Mm -hmm. I still have them now, but that was the reason behind her sudden death. She got sick. Like one day she stayed home from school. That night she woke me up shaking and she was said, I'm cold. So I got up and I looked at her and she had broke out like she had the measles. Mm -hmm. And I got my mother up and told her, I can't sleep with her, she got measles. Mm -hmm. And she, my mother got up 
and she just stared at my mother. And we, my mother thought she had the flu. It was back when, what was the year was that, when the flu was Hong Kong flu? I can't remember, but anyway, she just stared at my mother and my mother forced me to go to school. I did not want to leave her. Yeah. And she died like that morning by eight o'clock. Suddenly she died for I think for the doctor could get to her. And the autopsy said it they had got her to the doctor four hours before she could have they could have saved her because was the hemorrhaging from her kidneys or something like that that caused her death. They were gonna to carry her to the doctor, or the doctor was the doctor come to had her. to come to us and uh -huh. then we had to he had to get a ride. And he didn't drive, and by the time he got there, she was, he pronounced her dead when he got there. So that was a big setback for me, and I must have stayed out of school off and on like three months, mm -hmm. suffering with anxiety attacks. How did people treat you when you came back? They, they was good to me, but I, it was just something I couldn't explain because she was so young and a beautiful, lovely person. Smart, very smart. Mm -hmm. I used to stand back and let her take over because she was outgoing and very smart. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be a lawyer. She always said, when I grow up, I want to be a lawyer. She, if at, she died at 13, no, she was 14. I was 15 at the time. Mm -hmm. It was nothing that she couldn't do. No, she didn't do. Housework. She used to hang wallpapers for my mother, anything. And I used to stand back and I said, how is she so different? <laughs> but she was just a very smart young girl. When you went to school, to the high school, did you have to walk there too or were you able to get on? No, we, we, had, we had to walk to a bus stop, which uh -huh. maybe took us 15 minutes. And it was the main road 17. We got the bus on Route 17. Mm -hmm. And we lived on 606. So when it rainy days, my father, my uncle would pick us up and take us home from the bus stop. Mm -hmm. How, when you get to the bus stop, how long is the ride from there to the school? Um, I would say almost an hour picking up other mm -hmm. kids because we had to go on back roads and and the roads wasn't too good at that time. I reckon in the winter, it must have been pretty dark when you'd have to get up to go to school and to the, you're just walking through pitch black to get to the bus stop or was there any lights or anything like that? It's, I think we had to be near or be there by 7.30, 7.30 uh -huh. I think it was. And the last two years of high school, my brother started driving, which was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, but remember, we had to leave home early in the morning. That was the only thing. Do you remember what kind of car he had when he started driving? Uh, driving the bus. Oh, he was, was he driving the bus? or did Yeah, he... he got to drive the bus oh. the last two years in high school, so that was a big help. He was, boy, so he was 16 years old driving the school bus? Something like that, yeah. Because yeah. he was a, uh, here. See, my brother was born December the 26th. 1942. I was born December the 25th, 1943. Uh -huh. My sister was born, uh, she, she was born, she was a six month baby, so she was born January the 1st, the following year. So we was all together. like one, two, three, all together, like twins. <laughs> Did they just all get blended into Christmas celebrations? You just yeah, we the did Christmas week. celebrate, but we had to clean for a week before we could, you know, <laughs> look get ready for Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. We had to make sure everything was perfect for Santa Claus. What What would you do? What would you prepare for? We would rake the, get with dead leaves. We would clean up outside, inside, make sure the house need painting. We would try to paint. We would always. Fix up for Santa Claus. We didn't do that. Santa Claus didn't bring you anything. <laughs> what was your house like? Was it one story too? My or? father built our house. He oh. only had third, third grade education, but he built our house. He built his outhouses. Mm -hmm. He it was amazing. for only had third grade education. Did y'all get a telephone hookup or? Uh, I think I was in the fifth, sixth grade. Sixth or seventh grade or something like that when we got our first telephone. 
Do you remember any specific, you know, particular teachers at St. Clair Walker that really kind of in, impacted you and, and your, you know, they were just good, they really had a big impact on you? And Yes, his name was uh, Walker, um, Mr. Walker. Yeah, he was a very impact, and he thought my sister was a little genius. He mm -hmm. just praised her. In fact, she taught algebra when we got into algebra in class. He had her to teach. He was she a math was, teacher? He was a math teacher, yes. You like math, too. Did you still yeah, like we, math in we, high he's, she was skip, We was in the same like, grade because she was smart. They skipped her, and she was in the same class mm -hmm. together. Um, so... It, besides uh, Mr. Walker, was there anybody else that you just kind of looked up to in the faculty? Yeah, I liked him. I like all the teachers, but he was my favorite. Mm -hmm. What was a uh, school lunch like for you? And how, did you have school lunch in high school at that time? Uh, yes, yes, we did have school uh, when I went to high school. Mm -hmm. Not until I got to high. But, but I take it back. My mother was a cook at the elementary school for a few for years, so. We were the only elementary school in the county to have that we could um, buy lunch. Oh, yeah. And I think the lunch was 20 cents. 20 cents a day? Wow. Because the neighbors, a lot of it was three women from the neighborhood got together and cooked. So that's, I guess, it was so cheap. But things were a lot cheaper back then. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you remember what kind of food was served in elementary school? Spaghetti was number one. Spaghetti. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And fried chicken. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe sweet uh, sweet potatoes, Good and that's basically it. And milk, and what was the favorites? Uh, I think it, apple pie. I think they made apple pie. We had dessert like once or twice a week. Mm. And, so yeah, she my all mother was a very good cook because oh. uh, she she worked there. Until I think we had it until we got out of elementary school, and the school still stands. The Shallow Union Shallow mm -hmm. Church, and then the schools next door. It's two two black schools that still stand. No, it's only okay. It's two: Saluda mm -hmm. and Union Shallow. Union Shallow. Mm -hmm. When you were in uh, in high school, do you remember any like uh, how was it when exams rolled around? How'd you feel about that? Oh, uh, it, it was rough, and especially when I missed a lot of time out of school with mm -hmm. the anxiety attacks. Mm -hmm. Do you did you take any uh, like foreign language classes when you were in school? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Did they not offer any, or uh... mm, not that I'm aware? No, I don't think so. And so, not in in elementary school, in high school, maybe. In high school, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you did y'all have a like a band, a music class, or anything yes. like that? Yes, mm -hmm. did you, did you I, I did. I sing in the choir. Sing in the choir. Mm -hmm. Was it mostly uh, like spiritual tunes, or did y'all play any uh, sing any other kind of songs? Um, most of spirituals. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Did you, did you uh, sing in a church too at this time? Yes, yes. You had to do something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was that? Did y'all have to practice a lot? Yeah, we would practice it uh, on Saturday for church, and then school we would practice uh, mostly uh, a break time or a little time they were fine for us to practice it. Mm -hmm. We're, I, so I wonder, I bet there's got to be a couple people in the choir that are just in it just to be there, but how do a lot of people, did anybody take it like really seriously, like they were just they were there to sing their heart out? Yeah, because you could travel and you would like to go to other schools for you know, visiting. Uh -huh. other just... Where did you travel in the choir? Uh, to, like you had Essex High School, uh -huh. or we have Essex, and mostly Essex and Gloucester might have been the closest one for us to travel. Who was the best, who had the best choir at this time? Um, uh, Shallow wasn't bad. Shallow wasn't bad. <laughs> no, okay. it wasn't bad. Did y'all compete? Were there, was there a competition? Yeah, we, we did that at the college. It was the college. Um, we would go to Hampton, and oh. they would have all the high school. And, and I think we won third place one year, if I can remember. Right. What was it like going to Hampton from coming? From oh, here? it was nice. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was nice. Did you get any, did you get free reign to explore any parts of the of the town or the city while you were there? Uh, not really. We kind of stayed in a group, so I guess we they could keep up with us. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you had good, definitely had good food in elementary school. Uh, do you remember how the food was in high school? The food was good, yeah. And Still spaghetti or anything different? Yeah, spaghetti and uh, fried chicken and, and it wasn't a whole lot, but mm -hmm. it was good. Do you ever have any uh, seafood in your, in your school lunches? Um, not that I can remember. But we ate a lot of seafood at home because we went fishing with Rappahannock River. We did go fishing there. Um, this is Vasilios Cosmopolis. What type of fish did you catch? Uh, spots, croakers, and my father's favorite were catfish. Catfish? Mm -hmm. And I don't eat them now because I know they what's on the bottom, but that's <laughs> at that time. We had to eat what we could get. I mean, so is lobster, right? I mean, it's like what's good is good, you know? Yes, that's true. And we had fish a lot. Mm -hmm. And my father was a hunter. He used to hunt raccoons and muskrats, I Musk think I got it, yeah, and deers. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of wild food. How about uh, blue crabs or oysters, that type of thing? Oh, yeah, my father loved oysters and crabs and... So we was practically raised off a lot of seafood. So your father seemed kind of like he was a little bit of an outdoorsman. What's that? Your father seemed like he was an outdoorsman. Yeah, he was definitely. He was raised that way. and um, he, Did he hunt uh, for pleasure or did he hunt, you know? He did uh, both, yeah. He, had, he was the head of the hunting club. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he had guys come down from Richmond. It was about 15 of them. And they was like, oh, you thought they had a load of money where they would get so excited for hunting. <laughs> so they it was a pleasure it. thing. It wasn't like a feeding the family because you got, uh, it wasn't like a poverty thing. It was a pleasure. They had a club, and, and my family did own some land, so they had the land. And we didn't live that far from the dragon. You heard of the dragon mm -hmm. that goes through Virginia? It's so many miles. So we used to go, we used to walk there to hunt, and the dragon that was catfish. And, most of catfish I can remember, and perch, some kind of perch. Interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about whiting? Only in the river we caught the yeah. right whiting. Yeah. But the spots and crocus was the favorite from the from the river. Is spot the same thing as Manhattan? Well, no, right? Spot is similar to, to I would say trout maybe. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Because there's different names for the fish. I'm trying to think, but uh, cool. But I used to love fishing, but now I don't get to go. So I guess uh, yeah. I would probably, if I could go, I would like. I think I would like it. Now. <laughs> this is Mason. Uh, did your dad? Did he have dogs when you would hunt? Raccoons? Oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. about five. Five dogs. <laughs> yeah, and we we used to have one. His name was Rock, and he died, and we had. My brother preached the funeral and I <laughs> cried and it was like we was having a real funeral for the dog uh -huh. like we would do at church. How did you guys, this is Vasilios, how did you guys eat the raccoons? Did you guys uh, fry them up or bake them or? I, I didn't get How you. did you guys eat the raccoons? The raccoon? Ra yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. My father loved raccoon. We would bake them and legs be up and stuff them and mm -hmm. they was good back then, but I don't know when the last time I had a taste of a raccoon. We was raised off all of that. Uh -huh. I mean, nothing better, you know? No? Nothing better. Yeah, that's true. That's right. On Sunday, that was our favorite meal, raccoon and sweet potato, baked sweet potatoes. Oh, wow. Yeah, and collard, collard greens, mm -hmm. I think, out of the garden. Uh, this is Mason. When your dad got a deer, who was in charge of, uh, of dressing it? Did your dad dress the deer or did your mom have to do it? In terms of like, skinning and all that. Oh, my father did all the skinning. Mm -hmm. My mother would cook him with his legs up. I remember that and the stuffing. She put stuffing in it also. Did he keep the skins he kept? Or the or even the coon skins too? Yeah, he did. I think mm -hmm. they sold fur or something. Mm -hmm. I think they did. When you stuffed those raccoons for on Sunday, what did you stuff them with? She would put the, you know, the stuffing in, and then I guess she would sew it up. Uh huh. Like, what was the we had raccoon almost every Sunday for that. <laughs> was the stuffing with like cornmeal or? Cornmeal mixed with um, toast. They would mix it all together and put the seeds in. Yeah. Sounds good. We're getting hungry now. Yeah.
<laughs> it was nice, tender meat, and, uh -huh. uh, but now I, I can't see myself eating it now. <laughs> I know, people, you know, people think of raccoon as like this like crazy thing that you're not supposed to eat. I mean, from what you hear, it tastes pretty damn good. It was a, the raccoon, deer meat, and something else they used to, must rats or must something. Rats. Yeah, yeah, they used to eat that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did y'all ever, did, you, did your dad uh, hunt turkey? Yes, mm -hmm. wild turkey, wild yes. Turkey. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Did he ever mm -hmm. uh, travel uh, out, outside of this area to go hunting? Did he ever go into the western part of the state or anything No, like they mostly did locally. Because mm -hmm. um, my mother's parents left her some property and they used to go there to hunt. I think it was 17 acres. Oh, yeah. And they used to hunt there and they're near the water. So. It was a lot of guys who used to come from Richmond. So they had, like I said, it was about 15, 16 guys. Was it all army buddies of his? And, yeah, just... army buddies. And then some of them, um, families tied in. Mm -hmm. And then my nephew, they live in, grew up in New Jersey, but uh, they moved to North Carolina and they loved to hunt and fish. And yeah. you know, in the city, you don't get that. Oh. But down in, uh, they would come home every year for hunt and fish. And, May Day. Did y'all celebrate May Day? Yes, we did. What? What? Can you tell me about that? I, I've never really. They heard had to the, um, wrap the the flat, what they call them, the maypole, the uh -huh. in and out, and yeah, everybody dressed the same. And they did that for May Day. And they had softball games and all types of different games and a lot of food. It was it was very exciting. Did you play any of those sports? No, after my sister's sudden death, I just, you know, did what I had to do in school mm -hmm. to get by. Because, like I said, she was really a year older. I just looked up to her. She was like the oldest because she was just so smart and a lovely person. And it, it, uh, it just took so much out of me by her mm -hmm. dying suddenly. Did you still, did you still celebrate May Day in high school or is that more of like a kid's I don't thing? think they do now. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Um, did y'all, so in, in school, did you ever have a like, theater, like a uh, plays or assembly yeah, and stuff like that? What, what was that like? It was exciting, uh -huh. yeah, plays and, um, they did like, um, every Friday we would have a program and then some, one class would do plays or do something to entertain as well. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what they were about? Oh, how long they'd be? Maybe an hour or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody would speak or sing or any talent they could use for the little time that we would come together. Did uh, parents ever come in to see these plays or was it all for the kids? No, mostly unless it was a holiday or something special for fundraising or something. But that was just for the schools, you know, to come together uh, once a week for, you know, a gathering. You talk about fundraising. What were y'all raising funds for? Well, to buy certain things for the kids to have, you know, to use in schools or travel, you know, travel money when they go to other schools. Mm -hmm. All right, Hampton. And, and basketball, softball, we did have, that was the most exciting times. Mm -hmm. Did y'all have a good basketball team, softball Yeah, they team? did. They have a very good, they won a lot of trophies, but somehow they got lost somehow. I read, so did, uh, this is before integration when these teams were playing. Did they ever play uh, white schools or was it mo all no, just most? No, mostly just in the, in the set with black schools. Mm -hmm. um, so see, the integration part didn't come until I was out of school, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to, I can't remember the year, but I was out of school by then. When you were at this age in the school, do you, what kind of uh, you know, regional or national news do you remember hearing? And just big events. Oh, I used to like to watch the, uh, news every evening so I can report everything to my father. Uh -huh. A newspaper, he couldn't read newspaper. In fact, what's that group called? The Jehovah Witness? Mm -hmm. That's who taught my father how to read at a late age in life. Mm -hmm. He used to buy the newspaper for the weather yeah. and the time of the tide coming in and out. And he would do that. And I would read or tell him anything that I think he need to know or he want to know. <laughs> do you, can you recall any specific thing you remember reporting to him? He, yeah, about accidents or 
uh, something that in the county I think he needed to know uh -huh. about. You kept it pretty well. Because he friend. bought the paper because I always loved to read the newspaper. So uh -huh. that's why he bought it for me. And then he would use the newspaper to go hunting because there's something with the tide or the moon or the sun or something they would, uh, would go hunting by or fishing by. When there's a full moon, you don't go hunting. Yeah, well, f right, yeah. full moon and fishing, and they'll tell you when the tide coming in and going out. And that's why I used to tell him. But uh, but he still bought the papers every day because he knew I loved to read the papers. When you, so you watched the news, too. So you all had a TV? Uh, we didn't get a TV until, I'm trying to think, was I in high school? I might have been in high school when we got our first TV. Did you only remember you ever Lassie watch? and uh -huh. um, Roy Rogers <laughs> on Sunday evening? Did you watch oh, the Ed Sullivan show? Did you watch the Ed Sullivan show? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That was on every Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. And my uncle had a TV, so on Sunday evening we'll go to his house to watch Lassie and what was the other? couple other western we used to go to in Washington. We had to walk but like, ten minutes from his house. ODLR. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 we had to walk then then when we got a TV. We was very good when we got TV. We didn't get in no trouble because if you got in trouble you couldn't watch TV <laughs> for three days. Three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you uh, you kept you kept up with the news after high school too? Were you still kind of yes? I'm, I'm a news freak. I like watching news mm -hmm. and I like sports too. I watched and my team is uh, the Lakers. The Lakers. Yeah. <laughs> I love sports. For... I love uh, basketball uh -huh. anyway. Not too much in football. Not too much. Do you um, so? Do you remember ever any time you're watching the news, something happens, and you're just I don't know if your jaw drops, but you're just that's the only thing you can focus on. Do you remember any like early times where that's happened? It's like shooting or, or some children get shot, a house burn up, and children get bit. You know Stuff that like was that. like sad. Mm -hmm. When you were um, in when you were in high school, what uh, major news? Um, what major news stories really stuck out on the, on the national or regional level? Channel 6, on um, the local station, channel... National or local, whatever. Like yeah, the, Channel 6 was there. my favorite because I think that was closest to me with Richmond. I mm -hmm. think it was Richmond. So like, uh, well, so the high, um, but high school, right, did any major national events happen? So for example, I forget what year, you said you were in high school, but... Uh, were there any assassinations? Were, what sticks out when you were? Um, what major events? I also we used to make sure I watched when a storm, like a tornado or a hurricane, because then I would start to think about getting prepared for it. How you gonna, what you gonna do for safety? Oh, and I used to make sure I made sure the family knew about that. Did y'all have to really worry about hurricanes in this part of the state? Not too much. Mm -hmm. Not too much. Uh, the weather, to me, since I've lived in New Jersey 20, let's see, 30 some years, Virginia is to me about the best state for weather that I have noticed mm -hmm. since I've been back here. Mm -hmm. And I would say right now it's the best state, and it's going to be better things coming when they finish the national park than Gloucester. Mm -hmm. Virginia going to be big time. Mm -hmm. When did you move to New Jersey? When did you move to New, New Jersey? When I finished high school. Okay. What did what did what did you do? Up when there? I went finish high school, I went to New Jersey, and I started working. My first job was decorating Christmas trees. <laughs> I did that for one year, and I had a cousin that I lived with, they worked at General Motors. Mm. So I left there and went to General Motors. And I worked there for 16 years, and I, there I worked my way up to a supervisor. Oh, wow. When they shut down, I went to a pharmaceutical company, and I was going to quit every day for a month because I knew nothing about <laughs> medicine. But I say, I'm not a quitter. And I hung in there and got all the learning that was training and everything mm -hmm. I needed to know. And I guess I became a very good supervisor there. And, and when Jenna Moses shut down after I worked there for 15 years, I went into a pharmaceutical and now 
That was really, I was pulling my hair because that was totally different. Mm -hmm. But I learned how to operate and I stayed there for 10 years. And we made penicillin, a oh. uh, biocraft laboratory. This, this was stationed in Elmwood Park near Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, Pat yeah. So yeah. they closed and they went to Canada, but I'm, I'm, I'm heard, I heard they moved back because they couldn't find enough trained people up there to do what they had to get done. So they moved back to Elizabeth, that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. When you move from, from here up to New Jersey, was it a big kind of cultural change? Did you notice any big differences in how people lived, how people interacted with each other? Totally big difference, mm -hmm. yeah. It was on? always something to do on the weekends mm -hmm. and places to go where we didn't have that opportunity down here. Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, I loved basketball, bowling. I used to like bowling. <laughs> that was my favorite, totally. I missed my knees up, and then I had to give up bowling. There was a, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can recall well correctly, but uh, things were uh, integrated up in New Jersey, right, when you moved there? Yes, it was, yes, there wasn't it was. This divide. All, all types of people. Was it, did it, was it uh, hard getting used to that, or kind of weird? No, because I love people, uh -huh. and I love getting to know people, because everybody's culture is different to find mm -hmm. out if we have to learn to survive. They can give us a few factor on how to survive mm -hmm. or what to do, or how do we do it? And yeah. that's why I love mingling with other people. Did you get to try any different new types of food when you moved up there? Stuff yes. You know, what did you try? Yes, Mexican. Uh -huh. No. Spanish food. Mm -hmm. and, what was your first impression of that, of Mexican food? It was a little, little spicy and hot, uh -huh. but I liked it. You liked it? Mm -hmm. the, uh, all right, so. As long as it don't make me sick, I can bear it. <laughs> so if you, in what way do you think your experiences overall at St. Clair Walker High School, how did that affect your life socially? It affected me, I, I love people. I love mingling with people because I think you learn so much when you mingle with other race of people. Mm -hmm. It helps, you know, it helps me to live better. Mm -hmm. did, and then we don't know who we gonna need to give you that last glass of water, or we just don't know. So how can everybody say, ah, I don't mess with them because they not did. But you don't know who's going to save your life. Absolutely. And that's the way I feel. Um, do you remember Cook's Corner? Yeah. Yeah, what, can you tell me about what Cook's Corner was? It was is. a little juke joint or bar, however they want to call it, uh -huh. but it, you, you had to stand. There wasn't no place to sit. No, <laughs> you just stand and look at everybody come in and go. And I think I was there one time when a fight broke out. Ooh. But during the time I grew up, we didn't have too many fights around. It was Herman Wake, Cook's Corner, and the Essex, they had, um, let's see, the wagon wheel, that was in Gloucester. Mm -hmm. And they have one, I'm trying to think of the name, the one in Essex where everybody used to go. So, Who owned Herman's? Was it lo local? Oh, he was awake. Herman Wake, Herman I think, Wake. was his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now the kids, they don't have anything to do around here other than go swimming, fishing, and a lot of young kids not into fishing. So, This Jew joint, it's our beer, right? Yeah. Did this place have an interesting reputation in the community? How do people view the juke joint? Uh, not really, because we didn't have too many fights. It mm. was just some place to do go on the weekends mm. and meet everybody else. And there was an outdoor movie place too, right? It's a Mr. Butler. The drive-in theater. Yeah, did you go to that? Yes, I did. Do you remember any specific movie that stood out to you? Oh, uh, Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember too much because uh, we didn't really go there that much. Mm -hmm. Was it expensive? I, do you remember how much it took? No, to everything there? back then was very cheap, was cheap. you know. Because what I'm trying to think, 50 cent a dollar, what we used to pay to go to the dances, I mm -hmm. think might have been a dollar. You went to the dances too? Yeah, I used to love to dance. Love to dance. Mm -hmm. Socialize. Uh -huh. but... how, when you, so what, what time would y'all get there to the dance and how long would you stay there? About, I'd say 10 o'clock and then by 12, 31, I think they shut down. Okay. 
It's pretty late. You, but it was never no fights or nobody mm -hmm. shooting nobody. Like today, you scared to <laughs> gather with anybody because that's all that's happening <laughs> now. Sad. Do you remember the uh, was it local bands playing, like at the yeah, music club? Um, Jammin' Jammers. Jammin' Jammers. <laughs> that was one of them. And they Donatones, those mm -hmm. two I remember. Did they ever put out, like record their music, these these type of bands, or was it just kind of a, they just here to play and they're not gonna write it down? Just there to play for us, I know. Mm -hmm. Do you know any of the musicians? I knew one, he was in, in talking to my cousin. I had a cousin named, her name was Annie uh -huh. D. Miller. Mine was Annie May Miller, and we used to be together. Mm -hmm. She's a year older than me. After my sister died, we were very close. Mm -hmm. In fact, she still lives in New Jersey. Still living in New Jersey? Yeah, she's 80. She's, she's going to be 81 in August. At uh, Cook's Corner, there was a baseball field, too. Were there, was it like pickup games, or was it? Well, I didn't really get to go to the baseball game because remember a place up on 17, I heard of it called Oliver Lewis, mm -hmm. was a restaurant. It was pretty good, nice, decent place. I worked there. Um, when my sister died, they had to find something for me to do. Mm -hmm. So he let me come there to work and I liked that and I met, got to meet a lot of people. You were a server there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What in kind fact, of music I worked there until I graduated from high school. What kind of uh, food did y'all serve? Oh, he had a dance hall in the back, and in the oh. front was a restaurant where they sold food. They had, he did really good business because it was a main road. I mean, it was on the main highway through from uh, Fort Houston, and all the guys in the military used to stop there. Mm. It was very exciting working there, and that helped me to get over my sister death by working there. Your, uh, your other siblings, did they, um, did they stay down here? Did they also move out? No, like my did? one brother, well, three brothers, they all went in, no, two brothers went in the military, uh -huh. and one went to college, and he's uh, got his own business and computer he lives in. He just moved to Woodbridge. He was up, I mean, um, Fredericksburg. Uh -huh. He was in Woodbridge, and he went to college, and he got his degree, so we look up to him. He's... He's 60, 67, 67, but he, he's the boss of the family. He direct, <laughs> he keep everybody straight now. Your brothers that went in the military, were they in Vietnam? Uh, yeah, he, that's the one that died from prostate cancer at 47, and it's something he probably picked up when he was over there. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Um, no, I think that's it. Uh, unless you have anything else. Yeah, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about? Uh, I would like to see the younger generation go back to how we enjoyed life coming up. It was no fighting and shooting, and mm -hmm. it was just, I would love to see that come back with the younger, younger generation. What do you think is the, is there like a, a key difference now versus then that, you know? Yeah, it's a big difference because all you hear is guns and fighting and, and it, it's a lot more for them to do, but it, it, every time they come together, it's sad news. Sad news, yeah. Well, Annie, I really appreciate it. And thank you for waiting for us and all that. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that doesn't bother me. I got patience. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need more of that, too. Okay, no. I think that concludes the interview. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, too.